A new robotic arm is bringing new hope to people who've lost the use of their arms and legs. Using only her thoughts, a Massachusetts woman paralyzed for 15 years was able to direct a robotic arm to pick up a bottle of coffee and bring it to her lips. It's the latest advance in harnessing brain waves to help disabled people. In the past year, similar stories have included a quadriplegic in Pennsylvania who made a robotic arm give a high five and stroke his girlfriend's hand. And also a partially paralyzed man who remotely controlled a small, ro small robot that scooted around in a Swiss lab. And here to talk to us about this is Professor James Giordano, the director of the Center for Neurotechnology Studies at the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies. Well, this is amazing stuff with the robotic arm and the brain waves, but will this brain control technology really be able to help paralyze people in everyday life? Well, you know, Rachel, it really seems that's the trajectory we're on. This type of technology is what we consider to be an adaptive, assistive technology. And what makes this one so special is not that it's really the first, but it's the first time that we see this level of fine-grained articulation, where a woman is actually able to hold the cup, articulate the cup, move the arm, move the hand, using nothing more than the impulses derived from her motor cortex. This is a major step forward. Is it very much different than uh, Stephen Hawking, the way that he works? You know, he has a ALS and he works something by, he's able to talk. Is it using that same kind of t technology? Well, it's based on a similar type of technology. What we're able to do with Stephen Hawking is he's directing his visual gaze onto a computational screen that then uses an algorithm to place particular word memes together and form language. Now, what you hear when you hear Stephen Hawking, quote, speaking, mm -hmm. is you hear the after effect, sort of an artifact of this program that then assembles the words. Normally, this is done very, very slowly, mm -hmm. so that you really hear the words much delayed. Now, of course, he's rather practiced this at this point as well. But what this is really important for is this is movement. And, of course, movement is far more complicated than we had thought it was originally. And so the interaction between understanding more about the way the brain controls movement and then harnessing a prosthetic device such as this articulated limb to actually engage those movements is very, very exciting and very provocative. And I imagine it's pretty expensive too, right? Oh, of course. But, you know, like so much of technology, as the utility goes up and as the familiarity with the technology continues, this tends to brought, drive the price down. And so, although at this point this still represents an experimental, albeit wonderfully experimental, step forward, what this actually suggests to us is that we're on the road to getting there where the reality of neuroprostheses, in other words, brain-controlled devices, is becoming ever more a part of our daily lives. Well, let's take it one step further. How about the rest of us? Could brain-controlled technology help us with text faster? Uh, there you go. You open up Pandora's box. Well, you Skipping know, that fact, step, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I tell you, that really does represent a very important next step is hands-off computational devices that link our brains wow. to an Internet-linked device. And, of course, that then gives us what we tend to call the extended lobe phenomenon of the Internet, not at our fingertips, but at our synapses. Wow. It's incredible. And it, it, it's hard to picture. We couldn't have pictured what was going on now anyway, so, you know, 30, 40 years ago. So it's going to be it's going to be amazing in the future, I, I, I have no doubt. Absolutely. And the field evolves very, very quickly. Give this about a five-year window of opportunity and watch what happens. Well, Professor Giordano, we hope to talk to you again about this. It's fascinating. Happy to talk to you again, Rachel. Thanks. Professor James Giordano, Director of the Center for Neurotechnology Studies at the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies.